First off, I want to make it clear that this video is sponsored by OVH Cloud, and for good reason. If you fancy hosting your own game servers, you want to check them out. Now you might be thinking, well, hey, I can just host the servers at home, and that is true, but there are a few good reasons why you might not want to. The biggest one for me is security. Exposing your public IP address to anyone connecting to your server, or worse, if your server is publicly listed, the entire internet, is never a good idea. And the fact that you have to expose the server to the internet so that people can actually connect to it, well, it's much better if that isn't on your system or home network. And cloud hosting providers like OVH Cloud put a lot of time and effort into making sure that their platforms are secure and robust. There is, of course, the uptime too, as cloud hosting has 24-7 availability versus needing to leave a PC running all day and all night at home. I think using a cloud hosting solution is the best choice here, so let me show you what options you've got from OVH for just that. The most affordable option is a VPS, or a virtual private server. These are basically where OVH Cloud will take one server and create a bunch of secure virtual machines to essentially divvy up the machine amongst multiple users. It's a really clever and useful strategy and means that they can offer virtual servers for phenomenal prices. They actually start at under £1 a month for their starter machine, although they've just rolled out a bunch of new VLE options, VLE 2, 4, and 16, with the number in the name denoting the number of cores and how many gigabytes of RAM you get. So for under £5 a month, you get two V cores, two gigs of RAM, 40 gigs of NVMe storage, and half a gig of internet bandwidth. That's pretty great. If you're looking for something more eco-friendly, OVH also offer So You Start and Kim Sufi options, which minimize e-waste by keeping older machines in use and at a reduced cost to you. Of course, if you're looking for something a little more powerful though, then you might be interested in a dedicated server. These are bare metal, meaning you control the whole machine, no sharing it with anyone else. You can start with a 6-core Xeon and go all the way up to a 24-core AMD Epic, although their four game server options are likely of most interest. Those being Ryzen 5600X or 5800X, Epic 4344P or Epic 4584PX. All of them come with at least one gigabit per second of bandwidth guaranteed, and either two 512 gig NVMe drives in software RAID, or two 960 gigabyte drives in software RAID, plus between 32 and 192 gigabytes of RAM, depending on your chip and configuration. The other major bonus to getting a cloud provider to run your game servers is the extra features they offer, like OVH Cloud's game DDoS protection. With just a few clicks, you can protect your servers from DDoS attacks and keep them running no matter how big or how long they're being attacked. These are some serious bits of kit, and luckily, I've got access to both the Rise Game 1 dedicated server and one of their VPS options to show you how the, the process of getting set up on either or both works. I'll start with a VPS. That's the option that most individuals who just want to play games with a group of their friends are more likely to choose, and I'll go with Minecraft for the game of choice here. Setting up the VPS on OVH is incredibly simple. Once you place an order for the server, it takes them a couple of minutes to configure everything, and then you get an email with the IP address, username, and a link to copy a randomly generated password. Logging in via SSH, you'll be prompted to enter that random password, and then immediately change it. Once you're in, you're now just in a Linux terminal, as if it was your own machine. For the Minecraft server, you will want to run app to update and upgrade to make sure that everything is nice and up to date, and then you want to install the Java runtime. I found installing OpenJDK-21-JRE was pretty much all you needed. 
you want to install or update screen and then enable the server port with UFW allow uh, 25565. Uh, head to minecraft.net slash download slash server and copy the link to the most recent Minecraft server build and then run wget to download it. Once Minecraft, uh, once that is downloaded, you want to run screen dash capital S Minecraft so that you can keep the server running even when you log out of the terminal. Then run uh, java dash jar server dot jar. It will fail to run, telling you that you need to agree to the EULA. So open that in nano and change the false to true and save it out. Also, if you want to change any of the server settings, open server.properties in nano as well. And otherwise, run sudo java-xms1g-xmx2g-jar server.jar no GUI to start the server. That sets the default memory allocation to one gigabyte with a max of two gigabytes and runs the server with no graphical user interface. And that's it. The server is running and ready to you know, go. Connecting to it via the IP just uh, works just fine. And now for the really fun one, using the Rise Game 1 server that I've got access to to run a CS2 server. Being bare metal, the server comes blank. So the first thing you need to do is pick an operating system to install. Luckily, that's really easy. Just hit the three dots next to the OS section, click install from an OVH cloud templates, and then pick an OS. I went with the latest LTS Ubuntu image. Uh, they will automatically install the OS and get it up and running for you. Uh, again, I'm just connecting via SSH, and well, this being Linux, setting up a CS2 server is a bit of a pain, but luckily I've done all the troubleshooting for you, so let's get started. First, apt update and upgrade, as always. Then create a new user account with user add m steam. And also password steam to set a password for it. I found you will also need to add a that user account to the sudoers file with add user steam sudo. Then you can swap to that account with sudo u steam s and move into slash home slash steam. When you're there, you can take the easier route to install CMD through apt, although I found that that just didn't work right. So you want to install lib32gcc-s1, and then also create a directory called steam and change directory into it. You want to run this curl command to download uh, steam and unpack steam CMD. And then once it's done, run dot slash steam CMD dot sh to install it. Then that will open the Steam CMD console. You can run login anonymous or ideally a dedicated hosting Steam account to avoid issues later, and then type app underscore update 730. 730 is uh, CS2 Steam ID, but you can install any game that way so long as you know that Steam ID. Once it's installed, type quit to exit back to the regular terminal, and then you need to create a couple of sim links. They're basically shortcuts for programs to know where stuff is. In our case, we need to create a sim link to a new folder called .steam, uh, still in slash home slash steam, so create that folder with uh, ln-s slash home slash steam slash steam slash linux64, and then uh, home slash steam slash .steam slash sdk64. And it is worth doing the same for the 32-bit folder, just replacing 64 with 32 in both of those there. And that means that the game can get access to the tools it needs. So you can now navigate to the CS2 folder, which is quite a long one. It's slash home slash theme slash steam slash steam app slash common slash counter strike global offensive slash game slash bin slash Linux 64 steam RT 64 and run dot slash CS2 dash dedicated plus map uh, D underscore dust two. Although much like the Minecraft server, you might want to run screen dash S CS2 server and then the dot CS2. With the server running, you can now connect to the game or connect it via the in-game console with the IP address get your friends in, and then enjoy the game. Let's have a go. Right, so we are in on the dedicated server on CS2, and uh, I'm playing a 1v1 against a good member of the Discord. Um, and uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. Um, I am, uh, I'm significantly less uh, talented at CS2 than they are, so we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna try planting hidden nicely in the corner. Uh, 
I don't think this is going to go very well, but let's try. Nope. Like I said, I'm not quite as skilled as they are. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, this is playing rather well. Obviously, this is 1v1, and considering that this is a dedicated Ryzen 5600 server, this can easily handle what we're doing here with no problems. In fact, as I likely already said, this can easily handle multiple game sessions all at once with no problems. So, yeah, I think we're, uh, we're going to have a pretty decent time here. It's kind of funny doing 1v1s because the map is so empty uh, and you have no idea where the other one person that's left is. Hey, there we go. But luckily I found them. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, no. Yes. <laughs> Why is that so difficult? <laughs> Oh, I'm just not good at CS. But luckily, the server's handling it perfectly, even if I'm not. Haha! <laughs> -ha! Yes! Victory! Four of those were against the bot while I, while I was waiting for them to load in, but hey! I won! Technically. <laughs> to be honest, I'm underselling the performance that a system like this can offer. If you opt for one of these Rise game servers or the outright game servers OVH Cloud offers, you're much more likely to be running CS2 multi-server, uh, the CS2 multi-server tool, because this system can handle hundreds of players at a time in multiple matches. It's properly pro-grade. That also explains the price tag. Uh, this Rise Game 1 server that I've been using is £60.07 per month plus VAD, which considering it's an entire managed Ryzen 5600X server is phenomenal. But for normies like me, well, I'll stick with the five to 10 pound a month VPS. So that is how to set up game servers on both a VPS and OVH Cloud's bare metal dedicated Rise servers, and a bit about OVH Cloud's offerings. Once again, thank you to them for sponsoring this video and to you for watching. If you wanna check out the multitude of options OVH offers, there are links in the description for just that. And otherwise, you can hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. Check out plenty more videos from me on the end cards. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.